tried using stars or flags in your email? A lot of times people will start using them and they'll work great for a little while and then it'll drop off and they won't work anymore. Or maybe you're someone who likes the idea of using stars or flags, but has never implemented it. For video number six in our series of 10 on clearing your email, I'll show you how to use email stars or flags today on Tuesday Tech Training. Hello and welcome to today's Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I'm the owner of Gateway Productivity and I'm a tech and productivity trainer. Today is video number six in our series of 10 on clearing your email. And we'll talk about using stars or flags in your email to keep track of those things that need to be done. For the remainder of the video series, I'll be talking about different ways to maintain your email and to keep it from getting out of control again. The first thing to think about when you're considering using stars or flags in your email is what is your to-do process? That's really what this is all about. And this is a really important part of email because you need to know when you are working on email, what's the next step? If there's an email that you can't deal with now, what's the next step that it needs to go to? It's not efficient to skip over it and say, oh, I don't have time for this. Then it goes below the fold, as they say, it goes underneath everything else and you have to scroll to get to it and then it gets lost. So what we need is an effective to-do process or task process. You may already have some kind of task process in place. Maybe you write it down that something needs to be done. Maybe you have a task manager that you can put it in. Those are all fine. But if you're someone who wants to try stars or flags as your task system for email, then I'll show you today how you can do that. I will show you stars in Gmail and flags in Outlook on your computer. These two systems are fairly different, so I want to show you the difference between them. I'm not going to go into every detail about each because this is kind of an overview, but we will go into each of those, and those are both very similar to all the rest of the email programs. Your email program probably does something like one or the other of these two. We'll start by looking at Gmail stars. Here we are in our Gmail inbox, and you will see right away, yours may look a little bit different, but you will see right away that there's this little area here for stars. Now you may have ignored it previously, you may have tried to use it and you weren't really sure what to do with it. So we'll talk about this from the beginning. You can star things straight from here. If you are inside an email, you can star from in here as well. It moves, I'm gonna, go on the right side of my picture here, and you can see the star right here. Currently it is not starred, and if I chose to star it, it changes color. Now, one great thing about Gmail is that you do have control over the colors of your stars. So let me show you very quickly where this is. If you go to your settings at your gear in the upper right corner, you can see I'm over here by my picture. We're gonna go there, and we're gonna choose the see all settings button, which should be at the top. Then we can go scroll down about halfway down. You'll see this little section for your stars. And you can choose presets where it's one star, four stars, or all stars. You can see there's multiple different colors. Currently I have yellow, red, and green in use and everything not in use. And you can see all these different options. And all you have to do, you can see my cursor changing as I hover over them. All I have to do if I wanna change this is grab one, drag it up to the in use area. That's how you make changes. I choose to use yellow, red, and green because it's kind of like a traffic light. You've got your green for maybe things that are low priority, yellow for medium priority, and red for high priority. But you are welcome to use any combination. If you don't even want to use stars at all, you can use all of these other items that they have available. Now, there aren't any custom items, but uh, they do have a lot of different items for you to choose from here. Once you have that all set the way you want it, then you would scroll down to the bottom and make sure you click the Save Changes button. I didn't actually make any changes, so that's why mine is grayed out. Yours will be lit up if you make changes to your stars. So now back in our inbox, the last thing I want to talk to you about is if you are going to use the stars, again, you can use different ones for different priorities. 
You can have the check mark for showing things that are done, however you want to use it. The key here is to get to your starred items, you can go over here on the left hand side and this is a label that's automatically tied to these emails that you have starred. Once you click on that, then you go straight to the starred items. And you can see here I have this is a lower priority, these are my medium priority, and that is my high priority that I need to deal with. This can be very helpful for people who tend to get distracted in their email. You can go straight for your start items and work out of that area and stay out of your inbox most of the time. Now we'll talk about Outlook flags, and this is the Outlook on your computer. The way you can use flags is very similar to stars, but where everything lives is very different. So that's why I wanted to show you Outlook separately. If your Outlook view looks like mine right now, you can choose to turn flags on and off. Once you have an email highlighted, if you hover, you should see, you can see the ones that don't have a flag lit up. You don't see it, but if you hover over it, then you can click on the flag and turn it on. So now this is a flagged email for me. Another way you can do it is once you have an email selected, you can go up here to follow up and flag the message. Those are two different ways to flag your emails. If you're someone who has all of your columns listed out like you see here, then you'll see that you have a flag column right here. And when the columns are gone, it's in the same place, but you don't see that column header that shows flags. So if you have the columns, you can choose to click on the flag and it'll bring all your flags to the top. So that's one way to organize. And when you want to get back to the way you've had it before, you just click on received and then that'll put your newest emails at the top like usual. If instead you have this view, which a lot of people do without the columns, you're going to go here to where it says by date, which is the default. And instead, you are going to change it to flagged mail. Your filter can be flagged mail. And then it just shows you your flagged items. One final way to find all of your flagged items, especially if you have flagged items through multiple email addresses that you're pulling into Outlook, you might want to use your search. And you can see I have my search defaulting to all mailboxes. Yours may say current folder. You can go here and change it to all mailboxes. Once you click in this search field, you can see your ribbon or bar right here changes to be, you see right here, your search options. And you can see that one of those is flagged. So we can click on that. Oh, let's do that one more time. And now it's got my flagged items across all of my email addresses. And you can see here are all of the flags. Once you're done and want to go back to the way things normally are, you can just hit the X next to your search and it'll bring you back to your regular inbox. And lastly, another place that you can see your flags is in amongst your tasks, if you're using tasks. You can get to that in the bottom left corner. You may see a little person icon here. If that's true, you'll go to the three dots, the ellipsis, and you'll find tasks in this list. So you may have people here instead of tasks, and so you'll go to this list. If you see tasks here, it's the clipboard with the check mark. You can click on that to bring up your tasks. And this view here, the to-do list here on the left-hand side, this is a compilation of your flagged emails and your tasks. And how you tell the difference is you can see these first ones do not have the clipboard, which means they are not tasks, they are flagged emails. And then everything down here that has the clipboard are my tasks. So this is one other way to access your flags and can be especially helpful if you're doing that in addition to using tasks. The key when you're thinking about potentially using stars or flags in your email is to come up with your plan. Think about first, what's my vision for my task or to-do management? How would I like it to look? How would I like it to function? And kind of jot down some ideas around that and then see if stars or flags fit into that vision. If they do, have a plan around what you're going to flag or star and why, and then you can make a plan for how you're going to work on those items on a regular basis. Is it a case where you're going to go to your starred label in Gmail and work out of that most of the time? 
is it a case where you're using tasks in Outlook anyway, and so you're going to use your to-do list under tasks to see both your flagged items and your tasks? Whatever that answer is for you is the right answer. Figure out what resonates the most with you and move forward with that. Have you had a light bulb moment from this training? If so, please let me know in the comments below. You can also put questions down there and I'll get an answer to you as soon as I can. You can also give the video a thumbs up or you could share it with someone who could benefit from the information. And be sure to subscribe by clicking the red button below. Once you do that, you'll see a bell icon. If you click the bell, then you will receive notifications each time a new video is posted. And if you're following along with our series here on clearing your email, then you'll probably want to go ahead and click the bell. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.